I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Worth Matravers in Dorset. It's about three miles to the south of Corf Castle and five miles to the west of Swanage. And we're going to be doing a, a roughly three and a half to four mile circular route starting and finishing in the village. And we'll be heading south uh, going towards the coast and uh, initially we'll be seeing a quite magnificent quarry uh, and then heading across the southwest coastal path around St Oldham's Head and then back to the village. So do come along with us. Now you can see I'm squinting in the sun. It's, uh, well, it's not even seven o'clock in the morning now. Middle of June, nearly the longest day but it's predicted to be one of the warmest days of the year so far. So we thought we'd do our walk nice and early in the morning to keep cool. Let's go. Well, I've parked my car at a car park just on the edge of the village. There's a uh, suggested donation of two pounds a day to use it. And there's a handy little map just by the car park. Um, hopefully you can uh, see this. So, that's where we park there. We're going to have a little wander through the village, look at the church, and then we're going to follow this path all the way downhill to Winspit Quarry, and then following the coastal path all the way around St Aldham's Head, and then back round heading north. Got some terrific views there, um, and then we're going to follow this path back across back to the village. Well, the first thing we'll look at as we wander through the village is the pub which is behind me here. It's the Square and Compass. Now the village uh, has been home to generations of quarrymen and it's fitting that the pub is named after the basic tools of the stonemason's trade and it's hardly altered as a building. Uh, I think it was originally a pair of cottages back in the 17th century and it was established as a pub in 1776 and there are some terrific stone benches and carvings outside with magnificent views of the Winspit Valley. The stone egg outside it is built by Purbeck dry stone walling and it represents the quarrying industry and surrounding the heavy rope represents fishermen one of the other occupations of the villagers but it is a wonderful pub and it's uh, <laughs> it's slightly unusual in that all the beer is served from a hatch in the door and the only food it does are things like pasties and dorset apple cake we'll be visiting that right at the end well i just continue to make my way through this <laughs> really quite delightful village and there's a little pond here which uh, i understand is um built over a fresh water spring and there are normally resident Aylesbury ducks I think they're having a lie-in I'm filming quite early in the morning and just panning round it really is quite a sweet place oh, just opposite the bus stop there um, behind the tree there's an old pump that villagers used to use to draw water in days gone by Okay, let's go and have a little look at the church. And this is the Church of St Nicholas's, thought to be one of the oldest religious buildings in Dorset. 11th century, typically Norman, but the history goes back much further than that, as suggested by a blocked up Saxon doorway set in the walls. The roof looks fairly modern. Now, apparently in the porch there's a uh, mounted a Celtic cross that was found in a grave set amidst the remains of an anchoress's cell near St Aldham's Head, thought to date from 1250 AD. Now it's a bit dark in here, a lovely um, top to the uh, arch there, magnificent door. Now I wonder if that is the uh, cross, although having said that, looking the on the right hand side there are some uh, equally magnificent looking uh, objects there. Wonderful. 
were close to the north door of the graves of Benjamin Jesty, the pioneer of smallpox inoculations, and his wife Elizabeth. The grave's just behind me here. Now Jesty was a farmer who believed that cow herdsmen and milkmaids who had contracted the mild illness of cowpox seemed to be immune to the smallpox virus which was a disease which was responsible for the deaths of a third of the population in the 18th century. And in 1774, Jesty inoculated himself, wife and sons, with cowpox using a darning needle, uh, becoming the first folk to carry out that procedure some 22 years before Edward Jenner claimed the recognition. And Jesty lived until he was 79 and his wife was 84. We just made our way back from the church and there's the pond again with the, the old post office on the other side of the wall there. So we're now going to start heading uh, south and uh, going to make our way through this rather pretty little garden area. I say the um, village always maintained strong links with London to which most of the quarried stone from round here was uh, sent for buildings. Indeed, there's a, a line of cottages here called London Row to uh, commemorate that partnership. <laughs> I just noticed there's a, uh, a cottage called Happy Cottage on the left. What a lovely name for a, <laughs> for a house. Okay, so I'm gonna follow this uh, road down here and eventually join the path to our next destination, Winspit Quarry. Wow, what a beautiful view. The two hills either side. The one on the, uh, the right is called West Man and the one on the left, East Man. And you can see the slopes uh, lined with terraces, very much the ex examples of medieval strip systems known as uh, lynchets. The, the terraces uh, just made it easier to plough. But I love the shadows that you get uh, at this time of the morning with the, the sun and then that glorious blue sea in the middle. And that's where we're going next. sea looking quite stunning this morning. Very blue, no clouds in the sky, with one sailboat on the horizon. So this is down by Windspit and uh, just looking at the, uh, the rocks down there you can see the patterns of some straight lines and uh, that's the old workings of when uh, there was a quarry here and although there was a, a land um, access to the quarry uh, for taking the stones away I believe that some of the stones were taken away by sea so I'm guessing that's what those uh, lines are for there. Okay let's go and have a look at the quarry itself. Well just before we go into the uh, quarry those of you that are science fiction fans might remember Blake 7. Well, this place was used as a filming location to represent uh, one of the planets, I think uh, Mechron 2, and it's twice been used uh, for Doctor Who, once in 1966 and then again in 1979 in the Tom Baker era, I think, when it was uh, used to represent the planet Scaro in uh, Destiny of the Daleks. So, as we go in, I want you to imagine that you're on Scaro, the uh, city of the Daleks. And in we go. I've been here on a number of occasions and every time I come in, I still get uh, overwhelmed sometimes with the place. It really is quite magical. I say it's an abandoned quarry. There were something like 200 uh, quarries in the area in the 18th century. 
now just a few remain and this quarry was last used in 1940 or 1950 something like that but it is really quite smashing and there's look some of the old quarry buildings on the left and then uh, here we go it really is quite amazing you can actually go underneath inside <laughs> if you're feeling brave well have a go see what the lights like in there but, uh, look at that it's very popular here for for rock climbing now I don't know what the lights going to be like <laughs> as I go through here I have got a little torch but I don't think that's going to make a, a huge difference it's so much cooler in here oh I love coming here you literally could spend hours just uh, exploring the place full of uh, fascinating things to look at it really is quite magical beautiful another little area to look at through here <laughs> again I don't know how light it's going to be in here but we'll give it a go it keeps us out of the uh, the heat isn't that brilliant <laughs> those uh, rocks there don't look too stable do they <laughs> Oh, and then what have we got through here? So we've got a nice little breeze coming through. Oh, isn't that beautiful? And there we are. I'm not going to get too close to the uh, the cliff edge. <laughs> Today, Logan, is a day that you're not going to be taking a dip in the sea. Oh, wonderful. waves crashing below there and just panning round eventually we'll be heading back up on top of the cliffs on the southwest coast path okay we're going to make our way back onto the southwest coastal path England's longest trail at uh, 630 miles which goes from Minehead in Somerset all the way around to Poole in Dorset and uh, it's quite a windy trail basically because coast guards went from lighthouse to lighthouse looking for smugglers so they needed to look down in coves and there we go looking down at the the quarry below excuse the puffy and panting now I'm gonna to have to keep Logan very much on a lead for the next bit of the walk because we're going to be quite close to the cliff edge I think We've just been enjoying a fabulous walk along the coastal path and from time to time you just have to stop and look out to sea and admire some of the quite marvellous uh, and stunning views and uh, on such a glorious day why not a little bit of a breeze now which is great because it is getting quite warm we've got plenty of water and Logan's got his little water bowl as well Okay, we're coming to uh, St Oldham's Head and there's quite a lot of things to look at while we're here. Well, just as we approach it, just looking down below there, 
some remains of an old quarry and then some other buildings that were connected to the Second World War because there was a big radar base around here but I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, shortly. Okay well, let's carry on our luck up here and there's a few things to explore ahead by the looks of things. Well the first thing to look at is this uh, rather magnificent sculpture and it's a monument that represents the importance of the peninsula during the Second World War and in particular with radar development and it, it basically it's two radar dishes looking like a, a fire basket and you've got the the modern aspect the radar dishes and the old aspect being the fire beacons and there was indeed a, a large radar station about half a mile north inland here at Renscombe where there were 2,000 workers. It was a chain home radar station and then just here is the Coast Guard station that was built in the, the 1970s and today is manned by members of the National Coast Watch team and uh, they're a very, very friendly bunch in there in fact they let you go in and have a look round and tell you uh, about how it all operates as well. Well I'm right at St Alden's Head now, quite windy so I hope it's not affecting the, the audio too much, although I'm pleased because it's cooling me down. Some cracking views from, from up here and I don't know if you can make out in the very far distance, quite hazy, that's the Isle of Portland. But here we're 350 foot above what is quite a notorious tide race and it's used as a lookout spot. We're on the main edge of a, a limestone plateau that stretches southwest from Worth. Right now if I just turn slightly to the right inland those white buildings over there are the old Coast Guard cottages and then there's a fascinating little chapel just to my right here which we're going to explore and this is uh, St Albans Chapel which I find quite fascinating. Very few facts about its origins are really known. It's uh, built on an earthen bank. It's distinctly Norman in architecture but uh, there are suggestions that this present building was erected in around about 1170 AD but it's very odd in that it's it's square with the points of the walls rather than the walls themselves pointing north south east and west and there is a central pier supporting a, a vaulted roof and uh, only one source of light inside a small window it's possibly not originally a chapel but more of a watchtower to protect the southern side of um, Corfe Castle perhaps and uh, there is evidence that it may have once supported a beacon possibly to aid navigation and anyway let's go inside it might be a bit dark though now it could be a very echoey in here and b not a lot of light <laughs> which isn't great with a gopro i mean i've got a little torch but i don't think that's going to be that helpful but it's as you can see it's quite quite tiny and you know if it was built as a chapel it's odd that there should be a central support like this because um, if I just walk around here obviously that's the pews and there's the uh, the altar with the one single window so not everyone would be able to see the uh, person giving the, the sermon but uh, quite fascinating now I don't know if you can see here look there's some graffiti etched on the wall here what does that say 1736 wow and oh 1665 well what a fascinating little place as i said there's many theories as to its origin i mean just seeing the the single window there makes you wonder whether perhaps a, a hermit lived here once who knows Anyway, it was abandoned in the 18th century uh, and refurbished in 1874. I think it is still used from time to time though. I was reading that someone got married here not that long ago. Uh, just as we leave the chapel and the, uh, the head, just looking down below, 
sea almost looking quite turquoisey on the rocks there. Okie doke, we are now going to start heading in a sort of northerly direction but still keeping to the to the coastal path. Well folks, there's a challenge ahead, not only for me, not just for Logan, but for my knees. I think it's something like 200 steps down and then 200 steps up. Let's go. Oh boy. I think it's easier keeping to the side rather than on the steps at the moment anyway. But my knees <laughs> are counting every single step. But wow, some terrific views from up here, aren't there? The waves lashing on the, the rocks below. And those quite glorious cliffs in the background. And all the little bays and the rolling hills. Beautiful. Right, let's carry on. Well, we've made it to the bottom. I think the worst is going to come. I'm not going to show you any footage of me trying to get up here because watching a middle-aged gentleman toiling uphill is not a pretty sight. That's it. Keep going. If you can pull me up, that would be very, very helpful. Come on, keep going. <laughs> I don't know which is worse downhill or the uphill bit. I think the uphill is slightly easier on the knees, he says, trying to convince himself. <laughs> Made it. <laughs> it was quite good fun. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Um, I should point out though, oh, where's the sun, um, if you're not quite feeling as energetic um, rather than yeah, come down all those steps and the other, if you go back uh, where we were at the um, Coast Guard um, house and you follow a track that goes by the old Coast Guard cottages and that takes you along a road back to the village but you will miss out on some views though. Oh dear, right. I think Logan and I are just going to sit down on this bench here and uh, relax for a bit. Uh, just continue to make our way along the coastal path and high up here on the cliffs is this memorial to the uh, Royal Marines. What's that say? 1945 to 1990 with a sort of uh, table and uh, bench. And again, this marvellous view from up here. <laughs> I'll try not to get too close to the edge. But just looking over the top, down onto Chapman's pool below with those yachts. And uh, there is a beach down there that you can uh, get to, a long windy path down that uh, doesn't look too busy at the moment. What a great place to have a picnic though. And someone else out there on a paddle board it looks like. Obviously the sea perfectly calm today with just very small waves lashing up against uh, the shoreline and the rocks. Well we've said goodbye to the coastal path we're now making our way back across some fields on our homeward leg to Worth Matravers, where hopefully, if I've timed it right, the pub will just be opening its doors. I meant to say right at the beginning where we'd park the car, you'll notice uh, something that looks like Stonehenge, except it's made out of wood. And indeed, it's the uh, Worth Matravers Woodhenge 
built uh, in 2015 by uh, the local landlord initially just as a temporary structure but it's still there today well folks we've come to the end of our walk we hope you enjoyed it if you did please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and as I always say if you haven't already done so please do subscribe that way hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future and do check out our Facebook page Dave's Countryside Walks well we thought we'd do our end scene here back at uh, Winspit Quarry such a magical place and what a brilliant walk it's been today the, well, the weather's been fantastic and some of the scenery quite stunning we're off back to the square and compass for a pint of gorgeous cider and a pasty <laughs> so until we meet again thanks for watching and cheerio